morning everyone good to see all of you we're uh, we're testing out having the feed also coming to us on my phone just over there so i can test how much of a delay we have which isn't a very big delay just a few seconds from the look of it it's very weird talking to you here on the camera and seeing myself over there at the same time but i'm sure we'll get used to it i'm gonna ask you for uh, a bit of interaction today uh, we always have some interaction but i'm going to ask you for uh, some feedback in a moment which i'll explain uh, we've put taffy the dog in the kitchen for the time being so he gets very excited when we start these services he wants to come and join in he thinks he should be in charge uh, so he's just outside at the moment but already people are excited to see taffy i think he's the main part of our services now so maybe he'll come and say hello again at the end welcome to all of you uh, the weather's changed quite a lot from yesterday. I know there's a few of you spread around different parts of the UK, but certainly around here, around Methley, it's very grey, quite windy. Uh, the gardener from Ladybird's Nursery next door very kindly came and mowed our lawn this week, and he said he thought we might be outside, and he's cut a cross design into our lawn for if we were having an outdoor service, but the weather has meant that we, we can't go outside. So sorry, Nick, that was a lot of work you put into that, and it looks great. Uh, especially if you look from upstairs and look down at the lawn but uh, but another time we can appreciate his handiwork on the lawn and have a simple service this morning with some music and some prayers and as always worship together so welcome to all of you wherever you are hope you've made yourselves comfortable uh, and if you can, you're all welcome to join us for Coffee After Church through Zoom. If you've not had an invitation to that, uh, a link, like a, a formal invitation sent through email, but you'd like to come and join us, uh, if you put some comments in the feed, we'll eventually be able to have a look afterwards and we can send that to you so you can come and join us and say hello. We are still in Easter, a couple more weeks of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. <coughs> He's he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. We like our alleluias in the Easter season. We meet in the presence of God, who knows, knows our needs, needs hears, hears our cries, cries feels our pain, pain and heals our wounds. Our wounds. Amen. So our first hymn today is going to be Great is Thy Faithfulness. And then at the end of our service, we're going to sing our second hymn. Uh, that classic, which is This Little Light of Mine. And I'm going to want some suggestions for us to sing in the verses. So we're going to sing later on, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. And we're thinking about God's light shining through us, even in dark times and even in uh, gloomy days such as today. How can we let God's light shine through us when we have to stay socially distanced? So, um, yeah, I'm just watching Anthony making some faces. Are you watching the feed? Is it okay? Yeah. We're just checking we're not having technical problems. <laughs> um, so if you want to send some suggestions, appropriate suggestions of how we can let God's light shine. So, for instance, I, um, I get a bit of road rage. Some of you know I'm not very good with road rage and I try very hard, but it does get to me, especially if I've got to be somewhere at a certain time. For instance, if I'm traveling across Leeds. Um, so I might sing. Um, when I'm travelling on the A639, I'm going to let it shine because that is a problem road for me, especially if someone pulls out and then proceeds to drive at 31 miles an hour all the way to Alton. That's, that's something that sometimes gets my goat and it shouldn't because it's a very small thing in this world and what does it matter if we're a little bit slower getting somewhere? It's much better to be safe. But there's an example for you. So if you um, send your examples, Anthony is frantically trying to write them down. <laughs> so we do apologise if we miss some of them. I'll prompt you again in a little bit. So how are you going to let it shine? So it could be when, you, when you're queuing for the shops, something simple like that. Try and make it scan, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't quite fit in our words. And we'll have a bit of fun with our, our final hymn towards the end of the service. We're going to have some fun as we worship God with our first hymn. And we're not going to change these words. Because I don't think we've changed them. You can sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I'll try not to bash the TV while we sing it. That's, the, that's a bonus, bonus act there. Maybe I'll just move forward slightly. 
so that doesn't happen. So give yourselves a little uh, sit up straight and open your lungs up ready to sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy Thank you for your suggestions so far about how you're going to let God's light shine in the world. I can see Anthea's writing a few down. You can keep sending those through and we'll try and incorporate them as best we can. Going to lead us in a prayer now. This is our collect prayer, our special prayer for today. And we're on the, I think, lost track slightly. I think it's the fifth Sunday of Easter today. So let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So Anthony is going to bring to us our next readings. We're going to have two readings this morning. We're going to try and write things down. Just going to try and adjust the light level because I can see on the screen it looks quite dark actually. What we can see. Yeah, it's all right. We'll... Morning, everyone. Morning, Anthea. 
This morning I've been juggling a laptop, a tablet <laughs> and my phone. And the words are projecting on the television. I feel like I've got a second career going on with um, technical support. However, I'm very happy to be bringing our first reading from the New Testament to us, first of all. So this is a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 7, beginning at verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Gospel reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the work I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Hi again everyone. Thanks Anthea for the readings. When I realised that our readings today were, were one that we quite often hear at funerals and also a reading about the stoning of Stephen, I have to say that my heart sank slightly because uh, they didn't seem to be particularly encouraging readings but we thought about it a little more and remembered that um, Stephen was living out his faith he was stoned to death in the very early days of the church. So it had only been um, a few days for people to adjust to this new faith of Christianity, this new way of being. And people didn't understand it. There was a lot of fear and there was a lot of anxiety around. And as you can see, there was also a lot of violence. People didn't react well to what they saw as blasphemy. Stephen was standing up for his faith and people saw God's light shining through him, but they thought it was misplaced. And so he paid the ultimate price for it with his death. Uh, but he saw that he was going to go to glory and be reunited with God. I don't want us to have to take such drastic steps as Stephen did. But I did think perhaps there are ways 
that we can still shine God's light in our world, even though we are socially distanced, apart from people, um, and there are difficulties in doing things as we've been used to doing them just a couple of months ago. So I wondered if it's a chance for us to reflect on this and think about how we live our faith. And we have a wonderful faith. We have that hope in everlasting life, in ultimately being in glory with God. And we don't know exactly what it will be like, except we know that it will be glorious, that there'll be no more pain, no more suffering, no more loss, no more heartache, that we'll be reunited with those who've gone before us together with God again. And I'm sure it'll be a place full of hope and full of light and full of God and the most wonderful thing that we can imagine. I can't imagine that we'll ever get bored. Sometimes people ask me that. Won't it get boring being in heaven, sitting around on clouds, playing harps all day? Maybe that's what some people enjoy doing, sitting on clouds, playing harps all day. But I'm quite sure that we won't get bored, that there'll be plenty going on. And so many people to, to reunite with as well and from learning from them as well. But best of all, just being back with God would be wonderful and truly glorious. It's difficult to think about these things, though. So it's good for us to think about how we can have a more immediate effect on our world and how we can shine God's light. And it is possible for all of us to make a difference in our world. Even the smallest things add up. Just see how much money Captain Tom, um, is he Colonel Tom now, I think, how much he's raised through lots of people, all giving um, small amounts. Some people will have given larger amounts. No one person has given £33 million. Pounds. It's all added together to make a great amount of money. You might be aware as well that this is the start of Christian Aid Week. Christian Aid is supporting people in the UK, but they're also focusing on people in poorer countries who during this coronavirus pandemic don't have access to health care and it's difficult for us to think when we're facing such problems and hardships here in the UK that this is affecting the rest of the world as well. If you can spare some extra cash this week then I do encourage you to give. You can donate online to Christian Aid. Uh, you can support the work that they're doing to help people who, who won't have access to ventilators they don't certainly have access to the health care that we have here. And if you can, then do please consider supporting Christian Aid this week. I'd encourage you as well to think about supporting our local food banks. Here in Methley, we have a local emergency food bank that's supporting some people in Methley who are struggling at the moment. Uh, but there's also the Leeds South and East Food Bank run by the Trussell Trust. And it's possible to donate online to them as well. If you give cash to the Trussell Trust, to the food bank there, they can buy supplies that are needed for people who suddenly perhaps their work has stopped now that we're in lockdown. They've got no money coming in and they there's nothing they can do about it. They can't find other work. And so they suddenly can't feed themselves or can't feed their families. Um, and for instance, I know they're also very short of things like nappies at the moment, the things that babies and little children would need. It's hard at the moment to get to the shops to give physical things like food and nappies but we can donate online and they would encourage us to do that and they can buy what's needed for people who need it most. Another brilliant thing that we can do is praying and I know lots and lots of you are praying at home so do take some time in your day just to sit, to be still with God, to thank him for what we have even in the midst of all these difficulties, to say thank you for the good things and for the blessings and to pray for those who are in need and pray for ourselves as well and our anxieties and pray for each other. Pray for God's blessing on all of us. And thank you for all your prayers, for Anthea and I as well, for the church. And we are praying for all of you too. So do keep putting in your comments. We've seen a few interesting ones so far uh, for us to sing about later in uh, this little light of mine how we can let God's light shine in the world this week. So some small things that we could do, uh, how we can resist getting angry, for instance, how we can react differently, how we can show kindness and show God's love, even when we have to stay two metres apart and a long way away from, from people elsewhere as well. So thank you. Just a couple of pictures for us to look at of light breaking through. That second one I think was a little bit more like the weather today <laughs> with the clouds but even when it is dark and stormy there will be light again and that light is still there just behind the clouds. 
our prayers today. We've again got some recorded prayers that have been sent from people from our congregation. So we've got a prayer from Sylvia from St Oswald's and also a prayer from Stuart from St John's. You'll see when we play these in a moment that Stuart has paused on his daily exercise uh, as he's been walking through past St John's Church. So you'll see the church in the background when we hear his prayer as well. And thank you to both of them. Come back and put the microphone in the right place first. <laughs> So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us at this difficult and dangerous time. We lift up to you all people who daily put themselves into danger for us. We pray that they will receive all they need for their own safety. We give thanks for ordinary people who are doing all sorts of things to make life more bearable for anyone who needs help at this time. And for those who inspire and encourage us, particularly Captain Tom, who raised our spirits as we watched him each day as he raised millions for the NHS. We pray for all who have mental health problems and for the homeless. And here we give thanks for the work of Kevin Dobson and all that cap in Wakefield. As we gradually come out of the pandemic, help us and all people not to miss the opportunity to make life better. Help us to keep sight of the goodness and kindness we have seen so that our new normal will treat all people with fairness and concern. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. A prayer today for medical workers everywhere in our world. Restoring and healing God. Thank you for medical workers everywhere, embodying Sacrificial love in these challenging times, putting the welfare of others before their own, staying away from their family and loved ones, comforting the concerned and bereaved, assuring the anxious and vulnerable, working to heal and restore people who are ill, be their guide, strength, wisdom and hope. We pray for those in authority to do the right by them, for proper protective equipment to be provided and for their dedication to be met with much gratitude and appreciation when they return home exhausted. And we pray for medical workers around the world where resources and protective equipment are always in short supply. Not only now but always. May these extraordinary times lead to deep and necessary changes in how our world works resulting in a genuine effort to address the profound injustice of life expectations being determined by geography, to awaken us all to the reality of how connected we all are and to work together to create a community and world we all want to be part of. So help us God. Amen. Before we pray the Lord's Prayer, we'll just keep a few moments of quiet for our own prayers as we all pray at home for all those things that are on our hearts. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Going to share peace with all of you and with one another virtually again. <clears throat> the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Peace be with all of you. <clears throat> Excuse me, fog in my throat. Um, so notices, thank you for sending us a few pictures of gardens last week. I've enjoyed looking at them. Um, anything that's brought you joy this week, if you want us to share that on our Facebook page, you can send that through to us and we'll, we can share it if you'd like us to. Um, again, you're all in our prayers. If there are particular people or places that you'd like us to pray for at the moment or situations please let us know. We'll make sure to include these people specifically in our prayers, um, including those who've died, those who may be bereaved at the moment. Of course, we're praying for all these people at the moment. We also just wanted to say, Anthea and I, a little bit about communion at the moment and spiritual communion, as it's called. Here we are, in case you've forgotten what it looks like. Here's, <laughs> here's the chalice and some bread. <laughs> The Church of England has told us that we can have something which is called spiritual communion. It's not a practice that we've had really, but it is something that used to be practiced more in the Book of Common Prayer. And it was originally designed for those who were unwell and unable to come to church physically, could still partake spiritually in communion by hearing the words and sharing in it that way. We're not at the moment able to have communion together, the bread and the wine. It's likely to be some time before we can do that again and definitely quite some time before we can all share communion as we're used to sharing it. Uh, it could be quite, quite a long time before we can do that again. Spiritual communion has been a little bit divisive in the Church of England. Different churches, different denominations have approached this differently. So some churches have said that if the priest is presiding with communion through the camera as we have been doing and you've seen that we've had communion a few times but not every week uh, that people can join in at home with bread and wine and share communion that way the church of england has said we're not allowed to encourage that and instead that i as the priest as i receive communion i'm receiving it on behalf of all of us and everyone else is receiving spiritually you get some vicars together in a room, even if they're two metres apart, you're going to have 17 more opinions than there are vicars in the room. And so people have approached this differently. Some have said that they're not going to have communion themselves if the congregation can't receive. Others have said that they know that people who are watching and joining in with communion that way find it a great blessing and an encouragement, even if they can't physically have communion, to see that the priest is and that they're praying for them in that way. Um, Anthea and I are embodying both ends of this at the moment, so um, I'll be having communion here not every week, but fairly regularly while we're having to meet in this way, uh, and I'll just receive, but Anthea is refraining from receiving uh, until she can do that again. So um, <laughs> just to let you know, that's why we're doing communion as we are. Um, I think our next communion will be in a couple of weeks time we haven't we haven't quite decided yet what we'll be doing for ascension day which is a week on thursday i think and then 10 days after that will be pentecost so some special occasions in the church calendar coming up where we we may have communion as part of this for instance so um, if you want to talk more about that let us know if you've got questions about communion if you haven't got the faintest clue what i'm talking about that's all right if you want us to explain it a bit more just let us know. Uh, OK, so you sent in a few comments about this little light of mine and how you're going to let it shine. Some of them are hilarious. I've seen a few of the ones that Anthony's written down. 
Some are going to be quite hard to sing, so I don't think we're going to sing all of them because there's quite a few comments here. Let me just take this from out there. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Peter Bloodworth, for trying to make your scan. I can see you've thought about how that fits in with the rhythm. <laughs> I saw your comment come through. Uh, so three. So there's quite a few here, so we're not going to use all of them. Please don't be offended if I don't use them all or if I combine them uh, into a, a joint thing. You can always sing your own words at home, so you can sing your own version of this. Um, feel free to not tell me what you're singing at home <laughs> if you're singing something less appropriate. This is how we're going to let God sh uh, God's light shine. Nearly said that terribly wrong. That would have been awful to go out on a live recording. How we're going to let God's light shine. Anthony's just dying of laughter in the background. God's light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So um, I'll start off with my one about the um, road rage that I sometimes suffer from once we've had our chorus. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I can make this fit. Let's see. When people don't social distance, I'm gonna let it shine. When people don't social distance, I'm gonna let it shine. When people don't social distance, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Do a chorus. <laughs> this little line of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. When I meet folk on my wall, I'm gonna let it shine. When I meet folk on my wall, I'm gonna let it shine. When I meet folk on my wall, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's see. When bikers don't ring their bell, I'm gonna let it shine. When bikers don't ring their bell, I'm gonna let it shine. When bikers don't ring their bell, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's see, what else have we got? When people are dropping litter, I'm gonna let it shine. When people are dropping litter, I'm gonna let it shine. When people are dropping litter, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let's do a couple more. When I'm grumpy with lockdown, I'm gonna let it shine. When I'm grumpy with lockdown, I'm gonna let it shine. When I'm grumpy with lockdown, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. When I see my neighbors, I'm gonna see my neighbors, I'm gonna let it shine. When I see my neighbors, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, let's wrap it up. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine,
fit most of them in there. Couldn't quite figure out how to put in the one about dog poo. <laughs> Thanks for that comment, Jackie. I know exactly what you mean. People sometimes aren't picking up the things that they should be picking up. But we're going to let it shine. We're going to let God's light shine in the world. can uh, have the joy as well of singing that for the rest of the day. You can make up your own lyrics to that one at home. So to conclude our service, let's have our, our blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, Open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. And God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with God's life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. So we hope you can join us again next week for our service next week. Same time, same place, possibly outside if the weather's good. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Alleluia. 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 Time for coffee after church. <laughs> <laughs>